I've known George for over 20 years. Uh, George is a consultant in the industry. We're going to talk about the call center industry. Let's let's give a brief history. I mean, I, I just said that years ago, a lot of the call centers, you'd call in and they would literally write your name down as if they were taking uh, a message for a doctor or a dentist. And that's how many of them start? Right, except it wasn't literal, it was actual. <laughs> It used to be written down. The industry was computerized by necessity. And the only reason it has survived is nothing to do with the industry, it's what the telephone company did. They did two major things. One is called ANI, Automatic Number Identification, which ties a phone number to the name and address of the consumer, and DNI, which was the ultimate nightmare solution. DNI means dialed number identification, and what that is, we know what phone number was dialed. We actually had to use, used to ask the consumer what phone number was dialed. We were lucky we didn't get their birth date at that point. In other words, somebody would call in and say, uh, dial 1-800-555-1212, and the operator uh, would say, what number did you call? Yes. Wow. There was no identification of it. Those two technologies have saved the industry, frankly. Uh, you just told me something very interesting about the history, I suppose, of 800 numbers. Yes, uh, ironically, and most people won't remember this, but 800 numbers used to be appended by except in, for example, uh, Oklahoma, except in Nebraska. I remember. Uh, the exchange, in other words, the first three digits after the 800 number defined a geography. By a strange coincidence, I finally made a sale to a company that represented carrier air conditioning. Uh, they had 800 carrier, and Mr. Carrier was still alive, and the agency said, you've got to get something that says this won't work, because 800 carrier was 227, which was Southern California. Much to my pleasant shock, I called Bedminster, from New Jersey, AT&T, said what I wanted to do and get a letter. They called me back 20 minutes later and said, we can do that. And I said, why have you never done it? You know what the answer was? What? No one ever asked. Wow. From that day forth, any number could ring anywhere. And that truly has salvaged the industry. Uh, yet, if somebody wants to, they can say, I only want California calls. Absolutely. It, you can have it where it routes to one place during certain hours, certain days, et cetera. There is now total flexibility in the use of an 800 number. In your 37 years right. plus, plus of of call center uh, management and, and sales, what do you think is the single biggest change you've noticed from when the operators would take the, yeah. uh, the numbers yeah. down to uh, working out of your home on your own home PC? There's two things, really. Uh, Want to hit on one? Sure. It's a three-digit thing called IVR. IVR for many marketers has totally repaced the live agent because they got totally frustrated with live agents and the cost of live agents because the calls were elongated, the conversion rates went down, the effective order time often became 20 minutes, say at uh, 75 cents a minute, which is $15 per order. You can't blame the marketer for going to IVR. And my IVR stands for? Interact Voice Response, a computer that everybody hates. So IVR is a great solution, right. however, only at the right time. IVR is cheaper than a live operator, but we're in a, even though we're in a instant, instant, instant society now, we still want relationships. You know, you make that call, hi, uh, I'm Mark, yep. uh, can I take your order yep. or can I help you? Yep. Instead of, hi, this is a Susie, computer. you're this automated. Is, right, exactly. The reality is uh, IVR does fit a purpose. My opinion, however, is IVR should never, been never be used until the offer has been tested and heaven forbid you actually listen to 20 or 30 non-order calls and find out why people aren't ordering. The IVR can't do that. It may be only, for example, 15 cents a minute. However, the average order call on an IVR is typically twice as long as a live agent. So the 15 cents a minute becomes 30, effectively. Right. And there's a, a situation marketers have overlooked, and that is the fact that television is entertainment medium. And you're running a short form, interrupting the viewer from what they want to do. Now, what happens is good news and bad news. 
the good news is, is most IVR vendors, as long as they've captured a credit card and a name and address prior to the consumer hanging up, they will call it an order. And live agent, you have a human being where the caller can, through their frustration, tell the agent not to log in. So there's a little hidden benefit to IVR. But very few percentage of the calls in an IVR actually get to the very end because of consumer fatigue. They want to get back to what they were watching originally. Even though, gee, they, I want that anti-aging product to make me look better. Well, they may, they may get it, but they may have uh, hung up in the 17th down so and up so and cross so and rush delivery, et cetera. Right. The other uh, concern, and it is major, and I, the, I do know the ultimate solution without ego, because okay. it's totally logical. What you need to do, because there's a 20 to 40% hang up factor at the beginning of people who hate IVR or can't right. use it. So what my uh, solution is, you offer at the very beginning. First of all, you find out if it's customer service, don't and get rid of it. Then if they want to order, potentially order, you offer them a small incentive to stay with the IVR. And if they don't want to stay with it, go back to Live Agent. You've spent the media, you spent all the money, you have somebody you've enticed, and now they've hung up on you. I know that a lot of people over a certain age, I don't know if it's 50 or 60, maybe older, they get frustrated with, you know, here's six different options, yep. and by the time they get to the sixth option, I can't remember what the first one was. That's right. Exactly. So hang out, I hang up. And that happens with insurance companies, with uh, healthcare companies, with doctors, with lawyers, Absolutely. whoever uses that kind of a system. Yep. Uh, there's a great percentage of hang-ups, and part of my thought is, and you tell me if you agree or not, is they do that on purpose because they don't want to take your customer service call. They figure you'll be frustrated, you'll hang up, you'll go away. That's right. Can't say more than that. No, That's you right. can't. You, you, you <laughs> agreed with that. That's good. Um, um, what was the second, uh, the, 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 the second technology breakthrough that you think is was great? DNI. DNI. Absolutely. We used to, uh, the first Ginsu knife, knife campaign, which is the largest campaign in history, will always be the largest. We took 10 to 25,000 orders a day. The media sourcing error rate was approximately 45 percent. Whoa. Because we ha would have to my first phone number with the company was 800-331-1000. Then we needed more numbers. I got 1001 through 1009. We would ask the caller, what is the last digit of the number you dialed to reach us? Right. We often got the zip code, birth date, last four digits security number. It was hardly ever right. Hardly ever right. It was pathetic. And now with the database? When the firm I was with before I became a consultant, we had 115,800 numbers just to track media sourcing. Media sourcing Amazing. is no longer an issue. Um, in our remaining moments, the, uh, the trend is that 50% of calls coming into a, a TV spot or a half hour are being answered on the internet. In other words, there's the, the, uh, the Mark Allen uh, product.com and, and what will happen is that instead of calling the 1-800 number, they'll go to the, the, uh, the, the website. In your opinion, do you believe that call centers will, in one way, shape, or form, always be around? Yes, they'll have to be around because not every... It, it's interesting, great point. <laughs> in my opinion, without the web, there is no more DRT because a web order for most of the vendors handling it, not internally, but the, the liquid focuses, right. permission act, et cetera, will charge a dollar an order versus eight, 10, $12 a live agent. However, what the web also does is allow window shopping. Somebody can go there. Now, some people don't trust a phone call for safety. Some people don't trust the internet. Now you have the two options. So you'll have people go on to the web and not be comfortable typing, but will learn enough. And the best advice I've given people in, in a long time, not that I've ever given anybody any good advice, but I said- You've been you, giving me <laughs> advice for 25 years. Well, here's one that people hadn't thought of. Put an 800 number on the URL. What did we learn from that? 
three to eight percent of the people that order come from the URL number because they went there to do their window shopping education, did not trust the web as an order taking vehicle because they're concerned that the number will get stolen. Now, frankly, I'd be much more concerned about a telemarketer or a live human being who can write it down. Right. But leaving that aside, it's bringing three to eight percent lift that I think they wouldn't have ordered because they don't trust the web as a vehicle of transmission of data. What a tremendous amount of information you've shared with us. Thank I you. appreciate it, George. Mark, good seeing you again. You too. Thank you, or George. glad to meet you finally. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, we've been spending some time with George Smith, and the bottom line about call centers, they're not going away. I'm Mark Allen, and this is ordermanagement.com. <laughs>